Hey everyone, Uncle Jesse here. Today I'm gonna walk you through creating a 3D scan of your face, then we're gonna use that 3D scan and bring it into a 3D modeling app where we're gonna make our own mask and then run off and 3D print it. Perfect timing here because Halloween is right around the corner. And before we get started, I wanna say a big thank you to today's video sponsor, which is none other than Elgoo, the makers of the Elgoo Saturn, the Mercury X Wash and Cure Bundle, and the Neptune 2, which I'll be showcasing here later in today's video. They also have some great resins that you can 3D print with that have low fumes and are easy to print with, including this beautiful mint green. If you're in the market for a new 3D printer, I would highly recommend checking out Elgoo's products, and you'll find links to those down below. Thanks again to Elgoo for sponsoring today's video. So for this project, I'm gonna be using my iPhone to create the 3D scan, and I'm gonna be using an app called EM3D, or Ethan Makes 3D, which is a super easy 3D scanning app that's available on iOS devices. Previously, I made a video, if you haven't seen that already, where I made a full 3D scan of my head using a different app called Scandy Pro, which you can find up here in the corner if you're interested in something like that. Apologies in advance for all of you Android users, because as far as I'm aware, there is no 3D scanning app options available for you. However, if you know of some, please let me know in the comments because that question comes up here all the time and I would love to be able to share that information with others out there. I'll also be uploading the scan of my face over to Prusa Printers. So if you don't have an iPhone or know someone with an iPhone, you'll be able to download that and use that for this particular project. And then when it comes to 3D modeling, I'm gonna be using my iPad and an app called Nomad Sculpt. However, this is the good news, this isn't limited to just iOS devices. This will work on Android tablets as well as Android phones. That's right, there is a mobile phone version of this that will even work on your iPhone as well that'll allow you to 3D model on the go. So hopefully I figured out a way to get this mirrored up on the camera there. Uh, but what I'm gonna do is hit the little record button down here and then move the camera from side to side and maybe down below to get underneath my chin and maybe a little up top. I'm not looking to get a full 3D scan of my entire head, just the front part because we're just looking at creating a mask based off of the, the shape of my face here. Should be generating the preview now and you can start to sort of see it there on screen. Looks like my eye, there we go. Not bad, look at that, I got under the chin as well. Little gap behind the ear, again, not looking for the full scan of the head, so this should work perfect for us to be able to bring this into Nomad and then create a 3D mask from this. When you go to export the file, there's two options. Export as an STL or an OBJ. Typically, the OBJ format retains the proper dimensional proportions of your head. So if you're looking to export something that's the actual size of your face or whatever it is that you've scanned, then use the OBJ option. By the way, if you're serious about 3D modeling and wanna learn more about Nomad Sculpt, I highly recommend checking out Southern GFX YouTube channel. I'll have links down below there and Small Robot Studios, which is another YouTube channel. Both of them make amazing content and tutorials around in-depth info around using Nomad Sculpt. It's a really powerful app and I'm barely even scratching the surface of it. All right, so let's see how this goes. I got the multi-camera setup thing going here and I'm recording on my iPad. So let's boot up Nomad Sculpt. By the way, this is a paid app that you're gonna have to buy. But again, I think it's like 15 bucks, maybe even less than that. Uh, and it's way worth it. So I'm gonna come in here and I've got a new project that's up and running. It just starts off with a sphere. I mean, basics of, of how you're gonna use the app is over on the side, it could either be the left or right, I have my panel on the right hand side, are all of your different brushes, like the, the, the clay brush here where I can sculpt directly on this. You've got a uh, your standard brush here that you're gonna be able to sculpt on. Here I've got it selected as subtraction where it's gonna be able to pull up. Um, then we've got things like the move brush where it's gonna move and move things around. You can use your fingers to pinch and zoom and rotate around. You've got a drag brush, etc. cetera. Uh, one of the tools that we're gonna be using a lot in this is the trim brush. So here, if I wanted to uh, just 
separate these two and cut it in half, I can use the lasso function there to really just start chopping away at things. Also, I have symmetry turned on, which means anything that I do on one side is gonna automatically affect the other, and you can control that here. There's a symmetry function that you can enable or disable if you need to. But what we're gonna do is we're gonna come in and we are going to load up a new project, and yes, and here I've got this saved on my iPad here. So here is my 3D scan. So as you can see in the world orientation here, it's not the correct way. So there is a gizmo tool that you can select. And then you'll see here that I can start to pivot this around. And at any point in time, you can use two fingers to undo, or there's an undo and redo function in the bottom corners of the app. So here, I'm actually gonna change this because I do wanna snap this to a 90 degree angle here. So I'm gonna come in here on the left-hand side. Basically, anytime that you're in one of these apps, you, or excuse me, one of these brushes, you might have secondary functions along the left-hand side. So here, I'm gonna come in and I'm gonna type in 90 here. This means anytime that I try and rotate on any of the axes, it's going to automatically snap to 90 degrees and I'm gonna turn that off. We've got my scan, look at that. And it's, if I come back in here, there we go. So here, I, at this point, I could start sculpting on this if I wanted to. However, what I wanna do is actually clean this up a little bit because as you'll notice, it's just a really hollow looking uh, model that was pulled in directly from the app and still needs a little bit of cleanup here. So what I'm gonna do is use the trim tool. And again, this allows you to carve away at your model. Here, let's just, just try and use the rectangle tool and see what happens. So here, I'm gonna clean this up. Ooh, that's already looking a lot better. So you'll see here that it filled in all of the holes in the negative space. So I previously had a hole, let's see that again here. So let me undo. I had some holes behind the ears and behind the head, and when I chopped that off, it filled in all of that void there. So here I now have a lasso that I can come in and I can just clean up any excess geometry here. And we're left with my head here that from this point on, I can just start directly sculpting on. Uh, we'll also notice that it's not exactly the symmetry isn't perfectly aligned here. So actually let's let's correct that before we do any any sculpting or anything fun and crazy like that. So here to quickly do that, I'm sure there's a better way to do this, but this is how I've done it is I go under the symmetry menu and I'm gonna click on show line and you'll see here that my head, just the way that this is lined up that we've either it was scanned or brought in or when I rotated it, it, it doesn't know what what I'm looking at and how it's supposed to be oriented. So here, if I go back under the gizmo tool, I can use the arrows to start sliding this over and try to, my best to see if I can get this, you know, somewhat in the center there. And I can use these other ones to rotate it as well. This outer orange or beige ring, I can also click and drag to change the uh, scale of your proportionally ch change the scale of your object that you're working with. But for right now, I think this looks pretty good. And what I wanna do is, uh, before we go any further, I'm actually gonna go back under the symmetry menu. So symmetry is turned on. And what I wanna do now is click on mirroring. And what this is gonna do is actually gonna mirror one half of my face to the other. So I'm gonna, I, I typically like to do right to left you can play around with it and see what works best for you. I'm gonna say yes. And you'll see here that it's mirrored this one half of my face on the other half of my face. So it's a little bit wider than what we were seeing previously. So if I go back, you'll see it's a little bit wider. Uh, to me, that's okay because when we're making a mask, I want that to be a little bit larger because I don't want it to be necessarily snugly fitting on my face. So here we go, I've got a perfectly symmetrized face. I don't know if that's a proper word or not. And from here, I can toggle on or off that show line. I'm just gonna turn it off. What I like to do here is, or what we're gonna do, is I'm gonna come under the smooth brush and I'm gonna actually start smoothing this out because I prefer working with a somewhat smoothed out surface here versus what we were looking at previously. And 
here. I, I, I don't really care about the back of the head or my hair or anything like that because the mask, I'm really just looking at making a uh, either from the nose down or from the eye, right above the eye down to the chin area. And maybe I think we're gonna make like a pumpkin mask maybe. All right, so Uncle Jesse here. I wanted to actually speed this up a bit because this was very quickly turning into an over hour long tutorial video. So I wanna just briefly explain what I'm going through here. So first thing we're gonna do is mask off the area using the masking tool. This will allow you to just generally draw out the overall shape of the mask that you're looking to create. You can also control it by using the unmask control or mask controls on the left side of the app controls. Up along the top is the mask settings menu where we're gonna make sure that we have a shell thickness set to a about 0.2 and then the smoothest set to 30 then under the extract the shell option is selected and then we can actually extract our geometry which should create our little mask also you can go back and unmask the eye areas if you want those to be completely empty so that you can see through those and not have to worry about sculpting that section out so here I'm going to be just using some of the basic tools to create the further details in our mask. So I'm going to be using the trim tool and the polygon function, which will allow me to create a shape around the eye area here. I'm looking to create some sort of an X shape and I can continue to click into different points around that shape to add points that I can then stretch and elongate into the shape that I'm looking for. So here I'm playing around trying to get this into an X shape. And when I'm happy, I can click on the little green button. And since I have symmetry on, it'll duplicate that on the other side of the mask. So I'm gonna do the same thing in the nose area of the mask. And in this case, I'll turn off symmetry before doing this, just so it doesn't look a little funky once we actually proceed with verifying it. So now that I've got the eyes all sorted out and the nose, it's time to work on that jack-o'-lantern looking smile. So here I'm playing around with the exact same tool, the trim tool, and just generally sculpting out a shape of some pointy teeth throughout this thing and then extracting it all. And here we have our basic shell of our mask before we can start adding some details to it. One other fun thing I like to do is using the trim lasso tool and turning the mask to its side so that I can cleanly carve out either the ears or the back sides of the mask so it's nice and smooth. One thing you wanna pay attention to before adding details to the mask is going into the brush menus for each individual brush and making sure that you have turned on to model only on the front facing vertices only. This will make sure that you're not affecting the back of the mask as you're adding details to the front. And here we'll just be using some of those basic brushes that are available in Nomad over on the right hand side of the page. This is where you can really just explore and play around with what options are available there. So I'm going to be creating those pumpkin grooves using the clay buildup brush and playing around with the uh, intensity and size of those. I'll also be using the general brush to add some further details and along with the move function to uh, be adjusting the overall shape of certain areas. It also helps to turn off symmetry depending on the mask that you're creating so that not everything is perfectly uniform on both sides of the mask. I'm also using the move brush to add little dots and divots all across the mask just so that we can help make some imperfections on our pumpkin looking mask. I'll also use the move tool to help further adjust the eyes. So again, not everything's perfectly uniform. And after just a little bit of modeling, we have a pumpkin mask that we can run off and send to our 3D printer. And here it is, it printed my very first 3D printed mask that I've designed in Nomad Sculpt and actually run off and 3D printed. This was a really fun project that I'm hoping will open up the doors to a lot of you out there that are not familiar or intimidated by 3D modeling. This is something that I'm hoping to try and do a little bit on every day for like a half an hour to an hour before I go to bed, utilizing my iPad in Nomad Sculpt. And I figured this was a great way to incorporate 3D scanning into this as well, where you can utilize your phone or a 3D scan that I've provided to you that you can download. If you don't have an iOS device, you can bring that into this 3D modeling app and start making your own masks and sharing those with fellow community members. If you're interested in checking out the pumpkin mask here that I've made, you'll find links to that down below. I also want to say a huge thank you to my Patreon supporters for continuing to support me in my crazy journey here on the YouTubes. If you're interested in my support settings for my 3D prints, 
You'll find links to that in my Patreon. And a huge thank you to Elgu for sponsoring today's video. If you're interested in the Saturn, the Mercury X bundle, or the Neptune 2, you'll find links to that down below. Oh, oh that's right. I actually printed this on the Neptune 2 as well in a 0.6 millimeter nozzle in this orange, I think it's Brad PLA from Protopasta. And since it was designed off of a scan of my face, it fits perfectly as well. Now I just need to go pick up some elastic straps, which funny enough, I don't have any on hand so that I can actually wear this. By the way, if you are planning on wearing a resin 3D printed mask, make sure you apply some sort of primer or clear coat to it before putting it directly on your skin. PLA, on the other hand, is completely fine for you to be wearing, and I'll be wearing this tomorrow when we go trick-or-treating with my kids. Thanks so much for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed this. Please let me know in the comments what you thought about this style of video. I would really love to do some more tutorial-based or just show off some 3D modeling in my very infinite, infinite? No, infant early stages of learning 3D modeling and some of the things that I'm coming up with or things that I'm running into and sharing it here with you all. So let me know again what you thought about this and if you'd like to see me do more of these videos here in the future. Hey, thanks so much for watching and happy Halloween. Bye now.